Welcome back. We are now going to take a look at using the normal CDF function to find area under a normal distribution curve. So in order to find area under a normal distribution, we shall use our normal CDF, which requires four inputs, lower bound, upper bound, mu, and sigma. And finding an area will be equivalent to asking for a probability and the default the reminder here is when we use NCDF, the default for our calculator is standard normal. So if we don't enter mu sigma, we're going to assume then it means standard normal, where mu for standard normal is zero and sigma for standard normal is one. So we'll leave off typing those in the calculator. We'll know what we're talking about. And then a note here that because we're dealing now with continuous distributions, it turns out that whether we have a strict inequality like less than or its counterpart would be a less than or equal to, these are now handled the same way. So unlike discrete distributions where we had to really pay attention to the differences between less and less than or equal to with continuous random variables, that that's not necessary. They're gonna be handled the exact same way. All right, so let's jump in. We're gonna see a few different cases. So case one here, find the area between two z-scores. So in other words, the question could be asked, find the probability that a z-score is between negative 2.25 and 1.50. So I'm going to assume here that now when we're referring to z, we're referring to the standard normal distribution. All right, so I'm gonna graph this first. So just getting a feel for this area. So negative 2.25 doesn't have to be perfect, but making sure we know for standard normal zeros in the center. So negative z scores would be to the left of zero, left of center, and then 1.50 a positive z score to the right of center. And we're interested in this area. So the area between those z-scores is equivalent to asking for the probability a z-score is between those two values. So we have our lower bound and our upper bound defining the region. So if we'd like to find that probability, we can do normal CDF and lower bound first upper bound second. And again, I don't have to put in the mu sigma because we are going to deal here with standard. All right, so we go to our distributions, normal CDF. Just remember for the negative that you're going to put in negation. So negate 2.25 comma 1.50. And I'll be writing that first in decimal, we'll do four places. So 0 0.92, careful with the rounding here. If I do four places, that will be 9210. Or just a talk in percents as well, that would be 92.10%. So remember the entire bell shaded would be one or 100%. So we got a good chunk of it shaded there, 92.10% of that picture. All right, and I didn't label my Z axis on all of these. So we're gonna assume Z now as we go forward. And number two, find the area between these two Z scores. So let's practice writing that as a probability as well. So probability, so negative 2.50, the lower bound, and then to say z is between, so less than sign, then our variable z, another less than sign, and then our upper value, upper bound, negative one, 0 0.75. Okay, so let's try to get a reasonably good picture of that. So negative 2.50, left of zero, and then negative 0 0.75, also to the left of center. All right, so in this case, 
you're looking for that area. All right, so normal CDF, negative 2.50, negative 0 0.75. So always left to right when you define the region, lower bound, upper bound. All right, so let's try that one. So I go 2.50 comma negative 0.75. And that's 0 0.2204 in decimal. Or we'll write it again in percent. So we won't always do decimal and percent, but I like to do it at the start here. Okay, so just want to do a couple more here with the between questions. There'll be a value that comes up when we're dealing with standard normal. Um, quite a bit this semester, and that value is going to be 1.96. In this case, I'm also looking at negative 1.96, and you'll see why as I do this problem at least a little bit. So let's write this as a probability. So we're looking for the probability that a randomly selected z-score would be between negative 1.96 and 1.96. All right, so on the graph, we're almost hitting negative two and positive two. So there's our lower bound and our upper bound. So I basically shaded the middle of this symmetric graph between those two values. So we'll do our normal CDF negative 1.96, lower bound 1.96, upper bound. All right, four decimal places is going to be 0 0.9500. And for the purposes of having this discussion, since it's 9500, I'm just going to go ahead and round that to two places, 0.95 as a percent. That would be 95%. So 95% of the graph is between negative 1.96 and 1.96 as a z score. So you might remember earlier in the semester that we said 95% of the data is between a z-score of negative two and positive two. Now it's just a little bit more precise here with the z-score. So between negative 1.96 and 1.96. All right, so we're gonna see this picture come up again later in the semester because we often talk about this middle 95% of the graph as opposed to what's left over in the tails of the graph, which would be the other 5% of the data. So if the whole graph is 100% and this is 95%, the remaining 5% is left over in the tails. So later in the semester, we'll start seeing that picture um, again. Okay, but what I wanted to do here was talk about how that question is related to the next one, which is the probability of z-scores between 0 and 1.96. So now the 0 is the center of the graph. Our z-score has a mean of 0. And 1.96, again, is pretty much over here at 2. So our lower bound is 0, and our upper bound is 1.96. So normal distributions are symmetric distributions. So coming back over to this picture, I put that line down the center. If this area was 95%, then this area, this area should be half of that because bells are symmetric. And we're gonna convince ourselves of that here right now. So this one is normal CDF. 0 comma 1.96. So let's try that one. Mm 
and that is 0 0.4750. And then just for the purposes of this example, I'm going to write three decimal, so 475. And then as a percent, that would be 47.5%. So in the first picture, the middle 95% was shaded, and then 47.5% is half of that. We could check 95 divided by 2 is 47.5%. So that's just a good reminder that normal distributions are symmetric about their meaning.